We got a batch in the belfry up there. <laughs> Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Oh man, it is good to see everybody. Feels like we haven't been here forever. But uh, I don't know where to start. Just uh, thank you for being here. God bless everybody. Um, it is such a joy just to see everybody. Uh, I don't know where Cheryl is, but anyway. Oh, she texted me. Jeff hasn't been well the past few days. Jeff hasn't been well the past few days. And she said she woke up with a sore throat, so they were going to stay home. Okay. Okay. Well, <clears throat> let's uh, let's stand and have prayer, and then while we are standing, we will <laughs> pledge allegiance to our nation's flag. Let's all stand together, please. Father, you have granted us the privilege, and it is a privilege and an honor for the church together in the church house. You have poured out on us blessings and grace and mercy and provisions that we neither earn nor do we deserve. We thank you, Father, for still providing us the freedom to be able to gather as the body of Christ. And as we gather, Father, we pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to the truth of your inerrant immutable word. Enable us, Father, to absorb and retain to meditate on who and what you are, not who and what we are. You would hone and shape us and form us to be the disciples that you would have us to be, enabling us in word, thought, and deed to reflect just who and what you are. As we come together this morning, Father, we thank you in the powerful master's name of our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, that he might be honored and glorified. And all of us together say, Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, do you feel like you want to tickle the Irish? <laughs> <laughs> we shall endeavor to do so. Well, <laughs> let's try 291, please. In which book? The blue one. Oh, okay. Okay, 291.
you're seated. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Yes, thank you. I do think you found the lost cord. Good. <laughs> the Word of God is alive and powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing of son of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. And is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scriptures God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correction, for instruction in righteousness. The man of God might be fully equipped unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the right word of truth. Let's open God's word this morning to Daniel. Daniel, I think probably we'll start in Daniel chapter 9. There are a number of things, church, that I'd like to share with you this morning. There, there are a multitude of things that I believe that without a doubt are pointing toward the uh, shortness of the time when the rapture will occur. Uh, I don't know how much time we have left, and it really doesn't matter before the rapture comes. Uh, like we've said before, if you're not ready when, they, when, the, when it comes, you're already too late. Because a twinkling of an eye is, is well, it's a twinkling of an eye. Uh, I think a lot of things, particularly in our culture nowadays, have been spread around as the truth. And nothing could be farther from the truth. There are a multitude of lies and, and misconceptions and things that tend to crowd out the truth. Uh, and without a doubt seem to create <clears throat> something that is ultimately aimed toward the destruction of our nation, as we know, to, uh, there is a hidden agenda. And the agenda, as I said, is designed to destroy everything that has made our nation what it is. Uh, our nation is built and based and formed and founded on Judeo-Christian heritage. Uh, that's not by human design. That was by divine design. God brought this nation into existence to, for his honor and his glory. And uh, whether we like it or not, um, <clears throat> Satan and his minions, as it were, have done a fantastic job of trying to destroy the foundation. We have certain things that have been founded, like marriage and family and nationalism, that uh, they have assaulted that with a frontal assault. Uh, marriage is no longer what God uh, designed and orchestrated it to be. Family is not what <clears throat> was initially uh, found to be what families are. I think somewhere along the line the, the, the attempt is to destroy families. Why? Two things. When you destroy a family, you destroy a marriage. When you destroy it, a family, you ultimately can destroy a nation. When you divide and break up a family, you will and you can destroy a nation. Uh, immediately the thing that comes to mind to me is under the watchful eye of Joseph and the permission of the Pharaoh, <clears throat> the sons of Jacob went into Goshen, that section of, of Egypt. <clears throat> they went in as less than a hundred people. The twelve sons of Jacob. Four hundred plus <coughs> years they came out. Came out of the same place. As the twelve tribes of Israel. A drastic difference. There were some millions of them. And they came from one family. Jacob's family. So you understand what I'm saying when I say that, that <clears throat> you can. If you destroy a family, you can destroy a nation. I have several things that I want to share with you this morning. 
uh, I've got a whole multitude of, of uh, handouts. Uh, I will get to those. Oh, no. Uh, that little lamp is nervous, but anyway, that's a whole nother story. Uh, <clears throat> I'll get to those in just a little while. But before we get into to Daniel, I have something I want to read and share with you. <laughs> On June the 10th, 1963, the Congress, Congressman by the name of Albert S. Herlong, Jr., representative from Florida, introduced a list, list of 45 communist goals for America. What? Yeah. January 1963, this congressman introduced for the congressional record 45 communist goals for America. I have read through all 45 of these things, and I say things because that's what I mean. But this goes right back to what I was saying about the objective to destroy, to destroy the nation. These things, these things, if readily accepted, will destroy our nation. And the objective is now to put these things in place. And you would not believe just how firmly entrenched right now these things are as far as our nation is concerned. I would like to read just a few of them to you. <clears throat> just a few. For example, in number 25, it says, break, break down cultural standards of morality by promoting pornography, promiscuity, obscenity, in books, magazine, motion picture, radio, TV. Why? Present homosexuality and uh, pornography uh, and promiscuity as normal, natural, and healthy. Wow. Okay. There's a subscript under that and it reads as follows. Today, those who still have the courage to advocate public morality are denounced and viciously attacked. Most Americans are entirely unwitting regarding the motives behind this agenda and it is an agenda. And that's the agenda. Uh, I'm sorry to say, sadly to say, that eight out of ten people that walk around in our nation today have no idea what this thing is. It is not coming from the pulpit, and that saddens me deeply, because the word of God needs to be rightly divided, uh, rightly divided. And we as pastors have the responsibility to stand in the pulpit and espouse the truth. Now, what is the truth? The truth is the truth even if nobody believes it. Amen. And a lie is a lie even if everybody believes it. This lie is being accepted. Even to the point of, let me read you a few more of these things. Resist any attempt to Outlaw the Communist Party. Okay. <clears throat> Promote the United, uh, United Nations <laughs> as the only hope for mankind. <clears throat> if its charter is rewritten, demand that it be set up as a one world government with its own independent armed forces. Here's another subscript. There are still American uh, intellects and elected members of Congress who dream of an eventual one world government and who view the United Nothing, the United Nations, uh, lost my page, mm -hmm. uh, founded by Communists such as Alger Hiss, the first Secretary General, as an instrument of bringing this about, we know without a doubt. 
There's nothing humanity can do to, to solve humans' problems. We know without a doubt, the only hope for mankind is the one who created mankind, and that was not man. We know without a doubt that our sovereign God is the creator. He is the one who put the spark in every heart. If the spark is not there, the heart doesn't move. It doesn't pump. That's the grace of God. But anyway, I, I, won't, won't, I think you get the message. I think you understand and realize what this is. This is designed to, in such a way to alter everything that we hold dear. This is designed to bring into fruition a one world government, one world currency, uh, one world religion. Is that going to happen? Eventually. I'm sorry to say, but yes, it will. Uh, eventually, we will be functioning under what is called the Antichrist. And he will come to fruition. But, I firmly believe that we will not be here to see that. Because I believe the rapture will occur. And I have something here that I want to hand out to you. That uh, uh, I wish I could say that I was the author of this. I'm not. It is a fellow pastor who pastors in Kanayohe, Hawaii. I can't even say that much less spell it. But anyway, uh, he is the one who put this together and it's based on where we're going to start this morning, if you will. I have a whole host of scriptures that I'll, I'll share with you now if I can find them. They're on the back of that. that? They're the third. They're on the back of this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't have to share it, they already have, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't have to write them down, they are already here. But I'll just share them with you anyway. These are pre-rapture tribulation scriptures. Uh, Daniel chapter 9, of course, verse 27. That's where you are this morning. Zechariah chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Joel chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. And in the New Testament... 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 11, and chapter, uh, verses 12 to 19. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Uh, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. And Revelation chapters 11, or I'm sorry, Revelation chapters 13, 17, and 18. Uh, Huh? I said, you want to take the passage? Yeah, please. That's who, that's who I was looking for. That's his heart. Thank you, sir. Um, if there are not enough of those, well, we can print more. So, um, <clears throat> a little bit of the background here on Daniel before we get into the ninth chapter and kind of separate it all and take it apart. Did you get a copy? Okay. Um, <coughs> in the ninth chapter of Daniel, let you give the remainder of that to you. In the ninth chapter of, of uh, Daniel, Daniel had been in captivity some 66 years. This was uh, the waning, as it were, the, the area of the entire captivity. So uh, I think it's rational and reasonable to assume that he was a teenager, he and his, his, his companions. And now here they are 66 years later. And uh, I think that would put them somewhere in the mid 80s. Give or take a little bit. I'm not the mathematician, so. <laughs> but anyway, um, Daniel was was thinking and reading and studying and still praying, even though it it caused him a uh, little time in the lion's den. But. Uh, 
by the grace of God, that was that was just an overnighter. <laughs> uh, and at, at the end of that flight, uh, the king let him out for breakfast, and that was a good thing. <laughs> uh, of course, the lions didn't have anything to eat, but that wasn't Daniel's problem. That was their problem. So, anyway, a whole other story. Uh, this was, was under the, the watch, if you will, of Ahasuerus and uh, uh, Darius, really. So what are we looking at? We're talking about the Medes and the Persians. Now, just so that you know, uh, modern-day Persia is the Islamic Republic of Iran. 1935, they changed their name from Persia to Iran. Uh, right now, it's amazing. There are multitudes of Iranians that are accepting Christ. Uh, these are Muslims. These are Islam. And they're getting the truth. They're starting to understand and realize that their only hope is relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which they never heard before. But anyway, that's going on today in modern day, uh, modern day Iran. Um, by the same token, there are things going on in the Middle East that line up as far as Bible prophecy is concerned. <clears throat> this is why I, I hand out, hand that out, and and believe without a doubt, based on scripture, that uh, the rapture is imminent and can happen at any time. So as I said, if you're not ready, uh, you're already too late. Uh, having said all of that, let's look, if you will, and I will share some other scriptures with you. Uh, Daniel chapter 9. Uh, And we start off in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus of uh, Midian descent, who was made king over the kingdom uh, of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, observed in the books. The books that he's speaking of are the Old Testament scriptures. So I just wanted to clarify that. The number of years which had which was revealed as the word of the Lord to Jeremiah the prophet for the completion of the desolation of Jerusalem's, namely seventy years. Verse three. So I gave my attention to the Lord God to seek to seek him by prayer and supplication with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. From this verse on to approximately verse 19 is the prayer that was offered by Daniel. Uh, he confesses his sins the sins of his people, and the sins of all of those uh, Israelites that were in captivity. So I wanted to say that so we can get into that. Uh, verse 4. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed and said, Alas, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and, and loving kindness for those who love him and <clears throat> kept his command and keep his commandments. We have sinned, committed iniquities, acted wickedly, and rebelled, even turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. Moreover, we have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke 
in your name to our kings, our princesses, <clears throat> our fathers, and all the people of the land, the land of Israel. Verse 7, Righteousness belongs to you, O Lord, but to us open shame, as it is this day. To the men of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and all Israel, those who are nearby, and those who are far away in all the countries to which you have driven us, driven them, because of their unfaithful deeds, which they have committed against you. Open shame belongs to us, O Lord, to our kings, our princes, our fathers, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belongs compassion and forgiveness. For we have rebelled against him, nor have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. To walk in his teachings which he set before us through uh, his, his servants, the, the, the prophets, verse 11. Indeed, all Israel has transgressed your law and turned aside, not obeying your voice. So the curse has been poured out on us, along with the oath which is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God. For we have sinned against him. Verse 12. Thus, he has confirmed his words which he had spoken against us, against our rulers who ruled, who ruled us, to bring on us great calamity. For under the whole heaven there has, has not been done anything like what was done to Jerusalem. He's making reference to the destruction of Jerusalem uh, under the, the, uh, uh, the leadership of Nebuchadnezzar and uh, the destruction of Jerusalem, the temple, and everything in, the, in 70 AD. So that's what he's making reference to, verse 13. <clears throat> As it is written to, uh, in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come to us, yet we have not sought the favor <coughs> of the Lord our God by turning from our uh, iniquity and giving attention uh, to your truth. Verse 14. Therefore, the Lord has kept the calamity in store and brought it on us. For the Lord our God is righteous with respect to all his deeds which he has done. But we have not obeyed his voice. Verse 15. We now, O Lord, our God, who have brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and have made a name for him for yourself, as it is this day, we have sinned. We have been wicked, O Lord, in accordance with all your righteousness. Your righteous actions. Let now your anger and your wrath turn away from your city Jerusalem, your holy mountain. For because of our sins, the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a reproach uh, to all those around us. 
A reproach is something that is scorned, that is criticized. Um, and when you have a reproach, there's a reason for it. And this reason is because of the sinfulness of the people in the nation. <clears throat> Verse uh, 17. So now, our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his supplication. And for your sake, O Lord, let your face shine on your desolate sanctuary, which was the temple which was destroyed. Verse 18. O my God, Incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolation. And the city which is called by your name. For we are not pre uh, presenting our supplications before you. On, uh, on account of any merit of our own. But on account of your great compassion. 19. On the Lord, O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and take action for your own sake. O oh my God, do not delay because your city and your people are called by your name. That's the prayer of, Jer of uh, Daniel for uh, the sinfulness of the time that <clears throat> the folks were in captivity. The time was running to the point where, as I said, it was 66 years. The duration of the uh, uh, of captivity was uh, 70 years. So the time was getting close. And Daniel had uh, uh, been looking at the, the prophecy of Jeremiah, and he knew that the time was getting short, and that's why he presented this prayer. Um, then we get into what what uh, what is called the, the times of Jacob's trouble, or uh, the seventy weeks of Daniel. Um, Just trying to think whether or not we have enough time to go through this. Now, uh, let's look, if you will, at verses 20 to page 23. Yeah, 20 to 23. Now, while I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God, in behalf of the holy mountain of my God. Verse 21, while I was still speaking in prayer, then the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision previously, came to me in my uh, extreme, extreme weariness about the time of the evening offering. Now, I want to stop right there. I want to emphasize something. The temple had already been destroyed. And yet, during this time of captivity, Daniel never stopped praying three times a day. Although they were in captivity, he still prayed for himself, for his, his people, and his nation. He maintained that even from the beginning when he and his companions uh, made, made uh, an effort and made it quite known that they did not want to de defile themselves by taking in the choice food and the choice wines of the king. And they never did. They maintained uh, spiritual stability, as it were. And uh, Gabriel, had, the, the, the angel Gabriel, had come to him previously. And they had communicated. And again, Daniel has uh, an answer for him that uh, speaks of the future. 
And he wanted to, to emphasize this. Um, let's look, if you will, from verses 24 to... the end of the chapter, which would be uh, verses 24 to 27. Seventy weeks have been uh, decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, uh, to make an end of sin, to make an atonement for iniquity, to bring to everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy place. Verse 25. So you are to know and uh, discern that from the issue of a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah, the Prince, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks in which it will be built again with plazas and moats, even in times of distress. Now, This message was being conveyed to Daniel. The rebuilding that he's speaking of went over to Nehemiah. Nehemiah had the responsibility. You remember that Nehemiah was the cupbearer for Cyrus. Uh, long story short, um, to approach the king as the cupbearer with a frown on the face could get you eliminated. <laughs> uh, so when, when Nehemiah approached the king and he tried to cover his sorrowfulness, <clears throat> Nehemiah had gotten the word from his brother that uh, Jerusalem uh, was in desolation, which is what Daniel was saying. He had gotten the word that the the, the gates had been torn down and burned, that uh, things were totally destroyed. Uh, and his brother conveyed to him what the situation was. In the meantime, how's your day going, brother? <laughs> but uh, that notwithstanding, Nehemiah came to, to Cyrus, and Cyrus asked him, this is long story short, and allow me, if you will, to loosely paraphrase. Why are you looking so sad? Uh, Nehemiah conveyed the message to the king of the destruction and the desolation of, of uh, what the situation was. This was his home, and he was making reference to the fact that his home had been destroyed. Well. The king said to him, what would, would it take for you to rectify that? And Nehemiah said, well, uh, I would like to go back and rebuild things. Well, the king said, how long will you be gone? And he said, 52 days. And he said, I will come back. Now, this, this is loose paraphrasing because we're not in the book, but anyway. The king allowed for him passage, supplies, letters of direction. He gave him access to everything that he would need, and he, <clears throat> he sent him on his way with everything fully equipped. And like we say here in the mountains, y'all come back now, here. <laughs> and uh, so, he packed up everything that he needed and he took off and he was headed for Jerusalem. He met many obstacles, but he accomplished the objective. Um, the 
The first thing that Nehemiah did once he got to Jerusalem and everything was there, all the supplies, to, uh, everything that he needed, first thing he did when he spent a number of days just riding around and surveying the damage as it were. He wanted to be totally aware of what he was looking at. He wanted to make sure that the message that he has received from his brothers and what Jeremiah and Daniel had conveyed through these two was accurate. So the first thing that he did before he drove any nail, as it were, or set up any block, he observed. Reconnaissance. Checking to see what the situation was. And once he found that out, then he put the plan together. Um, we are in that kind of same situation. Now, I don't mean for it to be a stretch. But I want you to understand where we are as the body of Christ. The body of Christ, the, the bride of Christ, the ecclesia, the called out ones, that's us. And we, in the 21st century, are still being persecuted. People fail to realize you will not destroy the church of God. You cannot destroy the bride of Christ. We will be raptured, but hundreds of thousands of people don't understand that. We're not going to shut down anymore to some Mickey Mouse coronavirus that some airhead somewhere decided he would put this stuff together. Is it dangerous? Yes. But the bubonic plague was dangerous. And who was the first persons to show up? Christians. Uh, wherever there has been a disaster throughout the length and breadth of our world, first persons to show up were Christians. The, this, the, uh, the good Samaritan, he ministered uh, what was needed to a Samaritan. In those days, the, the Samaritans, were, were, they were totally ignored. That's why everybody walked past him. This man had been uh, robbed, uh, physically abused, uh, as far as, as beaten is concerned, and yet the Samaritan stopped. And even, and the Samaritan was traveling. He's going about his business. And he observes this situation. And he took the necessary action even to the point of putting this, the, 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 uh, uh, the individual on his animal, his donkey, and taking him to the inn and telling the innkeeper, you take care of him. Uh, this is what I'm going to leave you to take care of him. And if there, there's anything left when I come back, I'll pay you then. But he made sure that, that the uh, Samaritan was well taken care of. Uh, so here we are today. And there is an agenda in place. And I want to share that agenda with you on the basis of what we said about this Communist Manifesto. The agenda, as we said earlier, is to destroy our nation. Now, the focus of this whole thing is one world government that we read in, in Revelation, particularly uh, Revelation 13, where the Antichrist comes to, to uh, uh, is revealed. Uh, anyway, I don't want to get on that point. I want to stay here. There's a great uh, amount of deception, and I want to cut right to the chase. I want to get right after it. There's something called Black Lives Matter. That is nothing more than window dressing. It's a facade that has been created for one objective, this agenda. And that agenda is in place along with several other organizations 
such as Antifa, uh, MS-13, uh, and uh, uh, anyway. The objective behind that, the agenda behind all of this fertilizer, did I say that? Wow, man. Is, is that the, the, why for you laugh? the agenda is to destroy the nation, to rip out the underpinning. So don't focus on the window dressing. Focus on the agenda. It's there. It's there. And the agenda is being funded by the elitists, the deep pocket individuals that want nothing, nothing worse, nothing better than establishing the one world government. There is an effort to destroy our currency. There is an effort to, to destroy our economy. Uh, this this uh, uh, virus has done a fantastic job of interruption, interrupting our economy. Uh, I've heard some people say that at some point in time we may very well have an economic collapse. I don't know. I'm not going to stand here and insult your intelligence by saying, oh, that's going to happen. I don't know. But I, I know one thing for sure. As long as we keep our faces in the book, regardless of what Facebook says, this is where we need to be with our faces in the book. This is going to provide for us the stabilization spiritually that we can say to this agenda, sorry about your luck. Uh, my God is a much bigger God than you realize. And at some point in time, sooner than later, you're going to encounter his rapture. His, 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 you're going to encounter his wrath. And when you encounter the wrath of the sovereign God that we serve, who is sovereign, eternal, love, righteous, just, holy, and omnipotent, you will be destroyed. You will face annihilation. So I would suggest to those individuals, repent. Repent. Otherwise, may God have mercy on your soul. Well now, getting to the latter part of verse 26. What Daniel is doing here, and again, I'm not a mathematician, but he is putting together for us 490 years. Now, how does that break down? Oh, man. Uh, the 70 weeks of Daniel. Uh, as far as they were concerned the 70 weeks or the seven weeks or years. So you have 70, <coughs> excuse me, you have 70 years. And in addition to that, where are we all going with this? Well, I'll tell you where we're going with this. Um, this is designed in such a way that it will build, as you're going to see once you look at the paperwork, build to the point where the last week of the 70 weeks deals with the church, the body of Christ. After that, after that, the Antichrist will be revealed. And when, when the term Antichrist is used, it doesn't mean Anti. It means that this individual will be totally against Christ. He will be the individual who uh, wants to be worshipped as Christ. 
as God. He will set himself up so the entire world will come to the point where they are demanded to worship him. Uh, that's what this is about. Now, where is the church at this time? I believe according to scripture that we've been raptured. This is the time that as we go into what's called the tribulation period, the seven year tribulation. Well, let me say this. The tribulation is designed for the salvation of the Jewish Israeli nation. It is not designed for the church. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Um, so, I hope that brings us as it should comfort. We will not go through the horrifying days of the tribulation, and they will be horrified. For us to accept Christ as Savior is three focus grace, faith, Christ. To accept Christ doing something like this, you're going to lose your top. <clears throat> the individuals during the, the tribulation period will be decapitated because you will not accept the mark of the beast. And the mark of the beast is the Antichrist. So you have Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. But what do we have? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mm. Satan always copycats a, a, a uh, counterfeit. And Satan, Antichrist, and false prophet are counterfeits. Um, this agenda thing. If you look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Our Lord, and G our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, Let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. Created he them male and female in our image. That's why life matters. Because God created life. All of life. That includes animal, plant, fish, poultry, and humanity. God created in our image. It's called the Imago Dei. The image of God is upon all of humanity. It is especially upon those of us who know Christ the Savior. As far as this tribulation, uh, this uh, 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 tribulation thing is concerned, if you know Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, you are already sealed by the Holy Spirit. You're baptized into the Holy Spirit. No matter how much, and we, we won't, but even if we did. Uh, we cannot accept the mark of the beast because we're already sealed. You remember that Jesus said to the Sadducees, the religious leaders at the time, they came to him one, presenting falsely the paying of taxes. And Jesus said, do you have a coin? And they said, oh yeah, we got a coin. So they flipped it out and showed it to him and he said, Whose image is on the coin? And he said, Caesar's. And Jesus said, Render to Caesar what is Caesar's. And render to God what is God's. Whose image is on you? The image of the almighty sovereign God is on us. Before I really get cranked up, let's bow together for prayer. <clears throat> Father, we do thank you for this time that you have allowed us to be together as family. There's so much, Father, in our hearts and our minds. <clears throat> 
We have so much to be grateful for, an attitude of gratitude. We can stand where we are, Father, and understand and realize that we are an integral part of the body of Christ. That if the rapture occurred right here, right now, in the midst of our service, we would be going home. How magnificent are your blessings, Father? How, uh, how you have provided for us the things that we neither earn nor do we deserve. We have so much, Father, in our hearts and in our minds. And we pray earnestly for our nation and our national leaders. We pray for, for those that are here, all the families here, Father. We pray your blessings on them and those that are not here for whatever the reasons. We pray for our military, our first responders, law enforcement, fire service, emergency medical service, the entire medical uh, community, and those who sit behind the microphones as, communi as communicators and dispatchers. We pray for our military. It's spread out across the nation and around the globe and the families of our military. Again, Father, we have so much to be grateful for. <clears throat> we thank you for all of the blessings, all the grace, all the mercy and all the provisions that you pour out on us. These are things that we neither earn nor do we deserve. For you are the sovereign God that we serve. And we pray all of this, Father, in a powerful, matchless name of our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, that he might be honored and glorified. And all of us together say, Amen. 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 That's our story. We're sticking to it. So.